Hello and good evening, everyone, and good day to all of you as well, wherever you are. And I hope you had a wonderful day before you, I mean, ahead, sorry. And uh, you are ready to learn a bit more. And of course, you also have some questions. Um, tonight's topic is definitely an intriguing one. Definitely a topic that brings lots and lots of questions and definitely um, something that, you know, everyone is talking about. Everyone is wondering what works, what uh, which uh, option works better. And as you can see, supplements, this is our topic, of course, if you um, haven't seen it yet. But of course, tonight as well, we have a very special guest, uh, Sandra Greenback. You can see her right here. She's been with us before. And uh, she also had a very first webinar this year with us. And I'm very, very happy that you are back. And today you will present this particular topic indeed as well. Uh, hi, Sandra. How are you feeling tonight? Hello. Yeah, no, I'm good. Thank you. I'm good. I'm looking forward to today's topic. Um, Definitely. We are. Internet connections not going to cause too many trouble today. Right now, uh, you can we can hear you. So please let us know okay. that you can hear Good. us uh, and, of course, Sandra as well. Uh, because, of course, we will start with Sandra's presentation. And then afterwards, it will be time for your questions. So remember that you can type the questions in the chat section. And Sandra will answer them for you right by one. Right, sorry, one by one uh, just after the presentation. And let me just mention that uh, Sandra is the founder of the Fertility Nutrition Center. She's an expert when it comes to nutrition as well. So anything that is on your mind, um, go ahead, ask her. She has experience and I'm sure she'd be happy to help you out. Uh, if you've seen some of her um, stuff that she's putting out uh, on, uh, on Instagram or Facebook, uh, I'm sure you you are aware how um, how useful it is. So um, yeah, I guess this is it for now for me. And let's get going with our presentation, Sandra. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Then. Right. Okay. Here's my slide. So right. So um, uh, I was asked to present on the topic of should you take supplements when you're trying to conceive. So. Uh, that's what I have prepared for you and um, I hope you will find this interesting. It's a little bit of a tricky subject for us nutritional therapists because um, we are not ever meant to give supplement advice uh, online or to somebody that we have not seen in clinic. So um, forgive me if I can't be too specific but um you will learn hopefully something today. So uh, as Caroline said, I'm a nutritionist, I'm a coach and an educator. Um, I've been a nutritional therapist since 2009 and I've been specializing fertility for all of that time. Um, I founded um, a place called the Fertility Nutrition Center, which is a place for other nutritionists to come and learn about fertility nutrition specifically which is quite a, a specialized subject which we don't learn too much about in college and also for the general public to find and un, uh, come and find information so um, I have two Instagram accounts which is where you can find most information really and then we've got the website as well so um, that's just a little bit about me and so let me just start by um, talking about why potentially we we might want to look at using some supplements to supplement the nutrients that we're getting from our, our diet. And um, one of the main things that has been happening uh, over the last 10, 20 years is that farming techniques are becoming really, really, really um, efficient and your crops are designed to grow fast and um what happens is and, and also we've got pesticides which um you know um they help obviously they help the farmers but necessarily help the land so what happens is that our soils become depleted and when our soils become depleted the the crop that grows in those soils actually becomes uh, has less of the nutrients in them um so this is a this is a problem and this is recognized um and if you look at data for you know how how how, how much vitamin c an apple would um have uh, had 50 years ago um that is now quite different to the same crop in this modern day and age but of course our need hasn't changed 
um, and we're not necessarily eating more either. So that that is one of the main problems that we're facing. Um, and the other thing is that our lifestyle has really changed. If you think about a family in the 1950s, generally, um, you know, stress levels would be lower. Um, this research that shows that we're sleeping about 25% less than we did in the 1950s. Um, and of course, the social media and smartphones um, have not been around for, for that long, really. Uh, you know, I probably had a smartphone maybe for about 15 years, if that, 12 years, 10 years. And, um, you know, as much as they have enhanced our life, they're also adding a lot of stress because we're constantly on, we're constantly available, we're constantly being fed information, we're looking at what everyone else is doing all of the time. We've got kind of real-time information in our pocket and we're taking it to bed with us. And it's just, um, you know, adding to our, our stress load, I would say, and um, lack of sleep, stress, um, as well as uh, caffeine consumption, alcohol consumption, and some medications, such as um, the contraceptive pill, for example, um, all of this actually depletes nutrients and it depletes the particular nutrients that are really crucial for our fertility. Um, and we know that this is affecting both male and female fertility because the research is showing that our fertility is declining and um, the researchers are, set off. what they are finding is that actually the reason for the, this de decline in fertility is because it's due to our uh, modern lifestyle and our exposure to uh, toxic to toxicity and uh, or to toxins in our environment and uh, and our lifestyles and, and also how our diet is changing because it's kind of fast food or prepped food and we spend less time cooking from scratch at home and so um, this is really kind of taking its toll um, on, on all of our health. And for some of us, it's affecting our fertility. And for some of us, you know, it may be affecting other areas of our health. It, it's, it's definitely having an effect. Um, and so um, I just pulled this quote because, um, you know, I, I think it illustrates really the importance of supplementation and from, from this um, study and, and the, the Researchers that said that there's strong evidence that complementary treatment with an appropriate nutraceutical, and I think the word appropriate is really important here, um, improves the natural conception rate of infertile couples and increases the success rate of artificial reproductive technology. So it couldn't really be clearer. Um, but let's talk a little bit more around um, supplementation from my point of view, and that is that... Um, quality when you're looking to buy a supplement it really 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 matters um we are looking for the right ingredients in the right formulation so for example if you're looking at supplementing an iron um you can you can get iron in lots of different forms and some forms are cheaper than others and some forms are easier to physically formulate into a supplement than other forms but sometimes those are also the forms that are not as easily um, absorbed for example so so the um, the iron generally that you would get prescribed from your GP for example is 80% less absorbable than some of the iron that I would prefer to use which means that we can use a load but it's more beneficial potentially for you as a as a patient so um uh, the form of the the particular nutrient that goes into the supplement is really important um and other ingredients inside that supplement are really important as well because some and, and generally you know when i say quality does matter it's um you know the cheaper formulations will have more fillers they'll have more um things that shouldn't be there like chalk to stop it from sticking together or um, uh, various um, uh, chemicals that had to help to help the supplement um, do what it, do what it's doing and look look right and not kind of melt in the in the bottle ever so it, um, you know you tend to get what you pay for in terms of the beneficial ingredients um, and um, and it's about dosage as well so you know quite a lot of the supplements that you find 
um, in a supermarket, for example, they'll just have really, really low doses of things that actually aren't really going to make a difference to um, to your fertility or to your health. And so it really is about um, the absorbability, the, formula, the formulation itself, uh, not having things that you don't want to be putting in your body. Um, um, and uh, yeah, so th those are the things that we're really looking at and, and the dosage as a nutritionist when we're looking for the right supplement for each client. Um, the other thing when it com comes to supplement is that um, if you ask any nutritionist worth their salt, they will tell you that you can't just supplement and ignore your diet. Um, it's always food comes first, always. So always, always, always. Um, eat right and a supplement is only to be a supplementation or a um, kind of insurance policy I suppose to um, add to that good diet and I've done a webinar already um, for my IVF answers on the diet and I hope it's recorded somewhere available to watch but um, and that goes through all of how, how you should be eating but there, there really isn't any point in um, looking for a supplement without also changing your diet and lifestyle because you that's just kind of going about it in a in a, a roundabout way uh, which isn't going to be effective um and the, one of the really really important things to understand when you're looking to take a supplement um whether it's uh vitamins, minerals or herbs is that they are really really potent and they can make a lot they can do a lot of damage if you are taking the wrong one by mistake. So, for example, I mentioned iron. You do not, we do not take iron um, if we don't need iron. So, if you've done a blood test and your blood your blood levels of iron are good um, or high, you don't or, or sort of towards the high range of the normal normal range. You don't want to be adding more iron. Um, because actually taking too much iron can be um, really detrimental for your health. And that's the same for many nutrients. But also all of the um, nutrients within a supplement or, or the herbs as well can interact with other supplements that you're taking. And they can also interact with medication, with prescribed medication that you're taking. So if you're on a blood thinner, for example, we might want to make sure that you're not taking vitamin K or a fish oil because they have the same effect potentially in the body and your blood can end up too thin and you could you could end up with a potentially really um, dangerous bleed, bleeding event. Um, and there's lots and lots of things um, like that that you have to be really, really careful with when you're taking a supplement. So it's, it's, it's important to get um, some really good advice and not just go and take anything that a neighbor has told you or a friend has told you what for them and and including anything that I am about to talk about in this presentation um, I would highly recommend that you get some professional advice before you pop that pill because um, you can really cause yourself some damage um, and also waste a lot of money because if you don't need it or if you're taking the wrong type or the wrong form then it's not going to be particularly helpful for you so um, I'm sure that all of you, you wait, sitting here listening uh, are wondering what supplement should I be thinking, taking then, Sandra? I don't, I just want to, I just want you to tell me what to take. <laughs> so, um, and like I said, it's really difficult for me to give you this advice as, you know, as a blanket advice because like, I'm not allowed to, I'm not insured to give you blanket advice, but let's talk about some of the ones that you will have heard about and some of the most important ones to be aware of as an option. So everyone knows, I think, who's been trying to conceive that folic acid is something that you should have been taking for 12 weeks before conception. And um, this is because your body absorbs um, the folate that comes in through your diet or supplement into your cells. And once you get pregnant, your the, the, um, the embryo will use this, um, the, the folate that you have stored. So it's not necessarily using what's coming in through your diet at that point moment in time. It's using what's in your storage. And that's why the 12 weeks is important. Um, your supplements will have different, contain different options. So you, you will have folic acid, which is the synthetic form of folate and folate is what you'll find in the dark green leafy vegetables in nature so you've got a picture there of 
think it might be um, broccoli. Um, so folate is found naturally in, in dark green leafy vegetables um, in nature, and it's uh, known to decrease, if you're taking it for 12 weeks before conception, it's known to decrease the risk of neural tube defects. But it also helps lower the risk of infertility, lower the risk of miscarriage, it increases success rate in um, assisted rep reproductive te technology cycles, um, it can help increase the number of eggs retrieved, um, it can help support the maturation and the quality of those eggs. Um, it can counterbalance free radical um, damage to cells. Um, and it can also normal help normalize something called homocysteine, which is um, associated with better embryo quality. And so there are some references there if, in case there's some professionals watching this who want to go a bit closer at this. But um, folate is depleted by heavy drinking and also the birth control pill. Um, if you've got celiac disease, it's more difficult for you to absorb it, and also if you've got um, IBD. Uh, so that's the, 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 the NICE guidelines state that you should be taking 400 micrograms a day for 12 weeks before trying to conceive. Um, I, mean, I just want to illustrate why it's... Um, why it's in, why why folate is so important, and actually why folate on its own might not be um, the be all and end all. So, I think the World Health Organization estimates that seventeen percent of the world's population um, is it seventeen? Is more than yeah? No, it's quite it's quite a bit higher that, than that. But basically, most the majority of women in the in the West who are of childbearing age don't get enough folate. And this is why there's folic acid uh, being added to flour in some countries and to juice and other other foods to try and get, get this into people who might not think about taking a folic acid supplement before, before they get pregnant. But anyway, let's talk about methylation. So um, folate is a methylating nutrient alongside choline, betaine, methionine, B12, B6, magnesium, zinc, and sulfur. Um, so what a methylating supplement does is it helps. Um, it's, it, it's involved in helping with the, um, the replication of the DNA. And so when the egg is fertilized, that's um, a moment of high need for methylation in the egg or in the embryo. And the study looked at um, a mother or um, two different mice mothers, um, and they had they had identical um, embryos uh, transferred. And so one of the mothers was supplemented for two weeks before conception and through pregnancy and lactation, um, and the other mother wasn't and so after weaning the mice were fed the same feed for 21 days so the only difference between the mums was that um, they were given methylating supplements before they got pregnant and throughout the pregnancy and whilst they were um, breastfeeding basically and the mouse on the right is brown it looks normal it looks how it should do and these are genetically identical mice and the mice mouse on the left um is obese and it's the wrong color and it's had it's got uh, lots of health problems uh, already and so as you can see that is just the power of methylation so the, the when I'm talking about the methylating supplements it's folate but also if you look at this lovely bunch of greens that comes with all of the other nutrients that that are needed for methylation so the magnesium and the other B vitamins in unison so this is why we're all it's so important to a look at food first because the food really is magical in that it just comes with everything that your body needs to make use of what's in that food and um all all nutrients depend on each other they don't they don't exist on their own in nature so just taking a folic acid pill is just not going to get you there in the same way as taking um a food as it uh, as it's produced uh you know in nature but also nutrients together 
And um, we know that, I mean, I just pulled a couple of studies here about um, multivitamins or prenatal multivitamins, which generally contain a, a nice range of the B vitamins and some antioxidants and minerals that you need for a healthy conception. Um, and it helps support ovulation in women. Um, it helps improve pregnancy rates in women compared to taking folic acid alone. So this particular study looked at um, women taking a, a, a multi versus women taking folic acid only, and they had quite a big um, improvement in pregnancy rates. And you will know that if you take a multivitamin, which is called the prenatal, um, it's not necessarily specifically got lots and lots of nutrients that you need to get pregnant, but it contains the right nutrients in the right levels and also in a safe level. So if you're taking a, any multivitamin, um, you can't be sure that it's safe for if you were to get pregnant. So that's why a, a prenatal is quite a good um, choice to make. So, you know, it would be called a fertility multivitamin. Generally, the pregnancy multivitamins are fine too. Then there's not an enormous amount of difference between them. But there, there are a lot of multis on the market, and they're actually very, very different. And so, really, what you want is a professional who can look at you and your lifestyle, and look at a couple of your blood test results, and really tailor your supplement to you to make sure that you're getting the most out of it. Um, but generally, a prenatal multivitamin should be safe. Um, lots of people ask me about antioxidants and, and they've heard that antioxidants are good for you for fertility. And so I'm um, just going to quickly run through what they do. So we, we are um, in our daily lives exposed to free radicals all of the time. And those, those free radicals can damage our cells. Um, but antioxidants kind of help mop up those free radicals to protect our cellular integrity and protect ourselves from damage. So vitamin C is, uh, is an antioxidant. It helps inhibit the generation of free radicals. Um, vitamin E protects your cell membranes. Um, and th there are studies that show that antioxidants and specifically uh, vitamin C and E can help uh, counteract ovarian aging. Um, women, if anyone here has got PCOS, uh, they do seem to have lower levels of antioxidants compared to other women, so they seem to need more. And so antioxidants generally, um, again, really, I wouldn't necessarily supplement with it an antioxidant specifically um, or an antioxidant complex. I would take a multivitamin and then I would make sure that my diet contains an, a lot of antioxidants. And the way that you can know that you have covered your most of your bases is to actually eat lots of colorful foods because each color corresponds with a set of nutrients. Um, so like I said, the green has the folate and the magnesium, the blue has the anthocyanins, um, for example, and and the, the red have, um, if you're eating tomatoes, for example, they've got the lipine, cooked tomatoes will concentrate the lycopene. Uh, watermelon are also high in lycopene, so you've got that from the red, and then you've got the yellow and the, the orange, um, and the white foods like mushrooms and um, garlic and, and things like that. So if you're making sure that you're eating all of the different colors, you're actually getting lots of different types of antioxidants, which are all gonna be really helpful for you. Um, and also, on my next slide, we'll see um, some Brazil nuts. So nuts are really a really good uh, source of antioxidant, uh, antioxidants as well. And we know that men who eat a handful of nuts every day actually have better fertility than men who don't. And I think that's partly because they've got really good healthy fats in them, but also partly because you get such a good um, dose of antioxidants from those nuts. Um, so unless you're allergic, um, that's a really good thing to be snacking on. And so um, selenium is one of those things that people ask me a lot about. Um, it's really important for your thyroid health, which again is important for fertility. Um, it's very strongly supportive of male fertility, but also involved in follicle growth and mat maturation. 
um, involved in supporting the egg development and also preventing chromosomal damage due to that, um, those free radicals. Um, we, you can, uh, if you measure the selenium content of the follicular fluid, um, the selenium there, so we know that the eggs need selenium to be, for the nourishment to grow properly. Um, and it might help supplementing with selenium to improve the outcome of IVF. Um, and, and one study found that women with unexplained fertility had significantly reduced selenium levels in the follicular fluid and blood. So that's just one of the antioxidants that I think is quite important. And um, if you eat it, if you eat one Brazil nut a day or two Brazil nuts a day, that should cover your selenium um, needs. But I will caveat that with it depends on where your selen where, you, where your Brazil nuts come from, and actually you also don't want to be overdosing. So it's a tricky one. But having some Brazil nuts in your diet can be a good idea. Um, CoQ10 again is one of those that I love using this supplement. It's quite expensive, and therefore you know people go, I've heard about CoQ10. Should I take it? Should I not? I'm not sure it's worth the money. So. I wanted to cover that here and that's an antioxidant as well as very good um, antioxidant and very supportive for your ovarian tissue. Um, it's incorporated in almost all of our cell membranes and as we age we lose, we, we get less and less and less CoQ10 so generally the older my client gets or the more exposed they are to pollution or stress, say they're an airline pilot or they're working in central London or commuting in central London or, uh, you know, edging towards that kind of magic 40 mark or beyond, you know, I will sort of tier the dosage depending on all of those variables. Um, but we do know that our levels decline as we age and, um, what CoQ10 does is it really um, helps support the mitochondria, um, which is what, which is we, every cell has a mitochondria in its center, and the mitochondria create energy for the cell. And as I'm sure you can imagine, energy is really, really important for a cell to uh, to grow into um, eventually into a healthy baby, and um, and also it's really important to power the sperm towards the egg so that, you know, get them so that they can swim with to where they need to be. So um, CoQ10, I do think is worth taking, um, but sometimes you do need to go to quite high doses and it can be expensive. Um, but it can really help support egg health, really help support egg health. And um Another antioxidant, zinc. So I've got a picture here of um, seeds which are high in zinc. Um, we Zinc can be quite difficult to get enough of in the diet. It's also something that's dependent on your digestion to work really, really well. And guess what shoots your digestion to pieces? It's stress. And who's not stressed? So if you're stressed, you might not be absorbing your zinc properly. Um, and, you know, the solution is not necessarily to just take more zinc, it's to support your digestion. And you, I would highly recommend that you work with a really good nutritional, uh, fertility nutritionist to, to really optimize all of that. But um, I have had a lot of clients in my days who have said, oh, but I take zinc, so I can't be zinc deficient. And then when you run a test, lo and behold, um, the zinc's just not going into the cell, it's not being absorbed. So um, the eggs need a really, um, really good amount of zinc to, to have a really good maturation, to, to mature really well. Um, and also zinc helps protect um, inside the head of the sperm, the DNA that's actually passed on to the egg, to, to the fertilized egg, uh, which is, makes up 50% of the, 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 the DNA in, of the, the embryo. Um, is protected inside the head of the the sperm by partly by zinc. So you need to have um, you know good zinc levels going in, but also good digestion to make sure that that's being utilised properly. Um, again, vitamin D. I mean, I could go on forever and ever and ever and ever and a day about the importance of 
vitamin D. Um, it's it's a public health um, issue. Um, you know, your doctor generally won't even test your vitamin D levels anymore. They just say, oh, we just assume that everyone's low in vitamin D and recommend that they take some. But I do recommend that you actually run a test and you can get those online. You can get a skin prick test really cheaply online um, to find out exactly how much you need. Um, because generally people are so deficient in vitamin D and it's really problematic for male and female fertility. And uh, yes, we're in the height of summer. So in theory, you should be able to get enough vitamin D from the sun, but you have to go out when it's sunny. You have to go out in the middle of the day and you have to expose your arms and your face for 15 minutes to pretty much midday sun or between 11 and 2. Um, and I think most people don't do that because we are in work, we're sitting at a desk or we're covering ourselves with sunscreen because we're looking after our skin. Um, and we're told that the sunlight, you know, gives you cancer and all of this. So, um, and the darker your skin, the less um, able you are to absorb vitamin D properly. So I think it's just a really good idea to get that tested and then, um, Again, talk to an expert who can tell you how much to supplement if uh, based on your test result. Um, Omega-3, again, is one of those that I use all the time. Um, our, defic our diet nowadays is woefully deficient in omega-3 fats. Um, you do find it in some vegetarian or, um, or vegan sources like flax and walnuts mainly. But um, the form of the omega-3 that we need, actually, um, when you're eating vegan sources of omega-3, we then have, your body has to convert that all the way down to DHA and EPA. Um, and a lot of people generally have quite poor conversion rates. So we're looking at about 10% conversion. Um, whereas actually, if you're eating oily fish, the fish has done that work for you. So you're eating the EPA and, D, uh, and DHA that the fish has made. Um, Omega-3 helps reduce inflammation. So we don't want high levels of inflammation, especially around the follicular fluid, because that's going to be detrimental to the eggs and the maturation of those um, the, the the eggs. Um, it helps Im improve your cellular insulin response, which again helps bring down inflammation, supports your progesterone production, which is important because without progesterone, we can't keep a pregnancy. Um, and it helps increase the blood flow to the reproductive organs, which is really helpful because increased blood flow means increased nutrient delivery and toxin removal. Um, and actually can potentially help um, delay ovarian aging and improve egg quality for um, older women. So really important to, to keep an eye on that. Um, but if you are prescribed a blood thinner like Clexane or baby aspirin or anything else that helps thin your blood, uh, which is quite commonly prescribed in IVF cycle, you must, must, must get this checked with your consultant or a fertility nutritionist to make sure that it's okay that you're taking the fish oil. Now, at this point in my webinars, this always happens. I get a sore throat and I start coughing. Um, for men, um, omega-3 is really important as well. Um, fertile men have a higher bl um, blood and sperm levels of omega-3, as well as um, better um, ratios of omega-6 to omega-3 um, levels in their serum. Mm. Omega-3 supplementation can help increase sperm count. It can increase um, antioxidant activity. Um, <clears throat> and it can also help increase uh, motility and morphology. So um, the trouble with actually, omega-3 is one of the things that actually I would advise you actually getting from a pill um, rather than eating an enormous amount of fish, oily fish, because unfortunately our waters are now so polluted that if you're eating fish <coughs> or too much fish, you're going to then end up with high toxicity levels. If you if you take a fish oil and it's a really good quality fish oil, which is high purity, it's, been, it's purified and it's independently batch tested, 
you'll know that you're not getting those toxins. And there are a few brands um, on the market which are really good quality um, and they are not available in your supermarket or um, high street pharmacy without mentioning any brands, but go to a really good, um, oh, that's the same slide again. No, um, go to a really good independent um, uh, supplement shop or health food shop who can help you, um, or, a, or a fertility nutritionist who can tell you what to buy. Um, some other, so for male fertility specifically, I know I've talked mainly about female fertility, and for male fertility it's quite difficult because the studies are done on certain nutrients and they're looking at certain parameters of male fertility generally so um you know they look for example the studies that are looking at morphology and um so the shape of the sperm and generally the the useful supplements there would be vitamin e selenium zinc vitamin e uh, c and lycopene so those are the antioxidants for any man men with hormonal issues low testosterone for example they want to look at their vitamin D status um, <clears throat> to help improve um, IVF or assisted reprodu reproductive technology. Again, we're looking at the antioxidants um, alongside folate. Um, as you'll see, <coughs> L-carnitine pops crops up as well, CoQ10 for sure, um, zinc. Um, and something called NAC, um, N-acetylcysteine, which is also an, a potent antioxidant. Um, you don't want to be taking that in anyone who's got asthma or any allergies. Um, but generally for men, you know, I would look at a really good multivitamin. Again, there are some that are specifically formulated for fertility, um, but a really good multivitamin is fine also. Probably an additional zinc generally. Uh, an additional CoQ10, because CoQ10 is a large molecule. So any any multivitamin that says, oh, it's got CoQ10 in it, it's not going to be enough because it's so big that you need a separate uh, capsule. Um, what have I said? Omega-3, so fish oil, CoQ10, zinc, multivitamin. Those would be the ones that I would generally mostly be using uh, and then maybe an NI, NAC um, for male fertility. And for any men listening, don't think that you can get away with not not uh, focusing on your fertility because this is a <clears throat> this is a partnership. Until your partner gets pregnant, then you're off the hook. Um, so what I want to just reiterate as well is that you know one size doesn't fit all. So we all have very different lifestyles, different genetics different um just very different uh circumstances uh you know family health family history and different stress levels different um nutrient statuses so one size really doesn't fit all i think that you know um it that quote that i mentioned at the beginning that said uh, you know an appropriate nutraceutical can help support fertility I think that's the main that's the operative word really the appropriate and it has to be tailored um, to you ideally and um, if you're not thinking I need to work with a fertility nutritionist which I hope that you might sort of start to be thinking about um, and wondering what we do so we don't just tell you to eat your greens um, we can actually help um, you know, refer to other professionals, but also we're looking at your diet, we're looking at your health history, we're looking at your family history, we're looking at your lifestyle, we're looking at your environment, and we will tailor your lifestyle, your diet, and your supplementation to you, but also looking at whether there's any gaps in your digestive function, or if there's any signs of inflammation that we need to deal with. Um, we'll look at blood test results and other test results and we might recommend tests looking at your stool, um, blood, saliva, um, of course, semen analysis, DNA fragmentation testing. Um, and we can help you also advocate and ask, ask the right questions for those other professionals that are helping you. Um, and, you know, look for 
potentially more answers as to why something's happening to you or why it's not happening in, in the case of someone's not trying to get pregnant. But generally, I would say that a session with a fertility nutritionist would probably save you time in the sense that um, you don't have to spend an enormous time researching, but also you don't spend time taking a supplement that's actually not going to be particularly useful for you. And you might even save money in the long run, not having to buy or not ending up buying things that are sort of, you know, not, not helpful. And so I think it's a, a really good idea to work with a professional. I am 100% biased about that. Um, but if you are looking for somebody, the only way to know if your fertility nutritionist is appropriately qualified is to look them up in um, our directory at the Fertility Nutrition Centre because there is, um, as far as I know, only one place to get your um, qualification and education um, as a fertility nutritionist, which is our centre. So, um, and you'll find us <clears throat> on Instagram, um, Fertility Nut Nutrition Centre as well, and uh, um, you'll be able to interact with all of the practitioners there. So I hope that has been helpful and it's helped answer some questions. And we do, I have purposely left an amount of time for questions because I know there's going to be lots that I've not answered or covered here. You are very right, Sandra. <laughs> Thank you so much, indeed. I am very happy and, uh, that we are able to discuss this topic. This is always a topic that brings lots and lots of questions. As you can see already, there are plenty of questions right here. I can see them, so, yeah. So it's, it's really great that uh, you are asking all of those questions. Uh, and, of course, we will try to answer. Uh, if we will not be able to answer all of them tonight, uh, we will forward this to Sandra, her team. I guess you will be able to help them out, of course, everyone, right? So uh, let's get going, okay? Uh, let's get going with the questions. Definitely, uh, we do have very interesting questions. Let's start with the first one. How can you prevent hypercoiling umbilical cord? I recently had a stillborn at 36 weeks. Are you able to help with that question? Oh, um, I'm really sorry to hear that. That's a very shocking and awful um, thing to have happened to anyone. I'm not aware of any nutritional intervention or to, to help prevent that. Um, that is something that would be medically managed. Um, I've no, I've never heard of anything that can be done um, food and supplement wise to stop that from happening. Um, unfortunately, of course. So thank you, uh, thank you for, of course, this uh, question. And we can only advise just to try to uh, find uh, some, you know, uh, maybe some other advice from some medical professionals. And I'm sure, you know, that uh, they will be more helpful here. Uh, still, thank you so much indeed. And let's have a look, okay? There are lots and lots of questions. The next one is right here. I eat organic fruit and vegetables as well as uh, lean meats where possible. I eat this to reduce intake of pesticides. Does this have the benefit of being more nutritious as also yeah there is some evidence to suggest that organic fruit veg is more contains more um of the nutrients and um the, the organic meats so they they generally the cattle or the uh the, the animals that are raised organically will be fed grass as opposed to grain which actually changes their um fatty acid com com composition in a, in a favorable way. Um, also eating locally produced and kind of as much as locally as possible and in season helps inc increase the uh, nutrient levels of your food because it's not picked before it's ripe and transported a long way before it ends up in your plate. Perfect. Thank you so much indeed for uh, for your question. And actually, Karen has one more question. So let me just uh, show you this right away. Do you get the same benefits of folic acid when taking methyl methylfolate? Can your can your level be too high? Okay. So some people are prescribed folic acid at, at high levels for a medical condition, and you you should never 
just come off it without having a, a discussion with your consultant if that is the case. Um, it's really it's really difficult to advise. It's more it's a very personalized question when we're looking at me. So methyl folate is a is a form of folate that is found in nature. So it's a, a folate as opposed to a folic acid. Um, folate generally is is a water soluble nutrient. So you would pee out any excess, but you can get you can end up with toxic levels. Um, you know, if you're taking too much and um, we don't kind of mega dose anything generally but what we want to do is when you're looking at folate supplementation if you're if you're having to take folic acid it's actually a good idea to work with a fertility nutritionist who can run a report to look at how you look at your full methylation cycle and look at how all of where if there's a get if there are gaps and if folic acid is potentially blocking some of the gaps um and um, whether you need folinic acid or methylfolate or anything else so uh, or actually potentially if you actually do need to talk to your consultant about potentially coming off the folic acid for your specific um, case so um, that's really something that's best working with a professional who can give you the advice that's based on specifically for your your methylation cycle if that makes sense all right thank you so much and let me just have a look yeah karen has added thank you of course so uh, remember you will have a chance to get in touch with sandra as well uh so you can always get some more details yeah as well i'm sure uh and let's get going the next question is uh, here should you take coq10 during two week wait and while you're pregnant um, sh I would never say should to anyone uh, about anything, but you can, um, it's not it's it's not uh, harmful. But you normally you would take it for egg health, um, and so you don't necessarily need to take it anymore once you've had the transfer or once you've had a positive pregnancy test. Perfect. Thank you so much for that answer as well. And so far, how, sorry, for how long should you take these supplements? I have been on and off them for three months. Can it be too much? You can, you can definitely get too much of a good thing uh, for sure. Um, obviously, I have no idea what you're taking, what forms and what brands and what levels and um, how much you need. So I, it's... Um, it's hard to say, but generally we would recommend three to six months preparation before trying to conceive. And that is because it takes roughly three months for um, a cycle of egg maturation or your eggs to go through a cycle of maturation. Same for sperm. And so if you're exposing those maturing eggs to all of these lovely nutrients for at least three months, ideally more, um, then they're getting the full benefit as opposed to if you're taking them just for a short space of time. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't take anything high dose for a long period of time without working with a professional because, uh, you know, unless it's water soluble, like if you're taking a mineral like iron or zinc or uh, magnesium, they can knock other things out and you can definitely end up with too much, um, depending on how much you're taking. And depending on your diet as well, you know, if you're vegan or vegetarian, you, you probably need to take supplements forever, potentially, um, if you're not having an, an omnivore diet. So it's very personal. Um, but generally, we would look at three to six months. Perfect. Thank you so much for that question. And that makes perfect sense indeed. And while we were, you were mentioning vegetarians, we have a question. Can vegetarian, mostly plant-based diet, despite of taking supplements, can, can it never negatively impact egg and sperm quality? If you're not eating, if you're eating mostly plants, I would, I would be a little bit worried about that, yes. Um, you can't uh, you can't really make up for that necessarily in a su supplement, especially if your supplement is also vegan or vegetarian. Um, it's a tricky one. All right, thank you so much indeed. And uh, let's have a look. 
Karen has one more question. To get the best benefit from PQQ and ubiquinol, should they be taken at the same time? Are they better taken on an empty stomach or with food? Uh, it really depends on the formulation. It should say on the packet of the ones you're taking. It should, re remind, uh, it should recommend you take them either with food or sometimes it says take with a carbohydrate meal. Sometimes it says take away from food. Take on an empty stomach. Taking on an empty stomach means about 30 minutes before you eat to an hour before you eat or two hours after. That's when your stomach will be empty. Um, but just follow the, the advice on the um, jar mm -hmm. or the packet. Perfect. Thanks so much. And one more follow-up. Okay. Can you test for ubiquinal levels? Do you run tests at your clinic? We don't really tend to test that so much. Um, generally, we would just make an educated guess at how much you need and then use it for, for an amount of time. Um, you know, normally we really, if we are lucky, we'll get three months out of a client before they're like, I want to be pregnant yesterday or last month. So we don't tend to really test. It's quite a tricky one, but there are, you know, we're like, we work like detectives. So there will be things that we're looking at, like your energy levels or how, you know, have you had a cycle where your eggs didn't progress? You know, did they not have the energy? We, we, we're always kind of asking sometimes quite random or questions that like might seem quite random, but they are, quite, it's kind of like a process um, that we will go through in our head to, to try and figure out um, what your levels might look like. All right, excellent. Thanks so much indeed. And sorry, Karen has added into the previous question actually, mm -hmm. so I guess we can still have a mm -hmm. look. So I typically use Jaro, Solgar, Thor brands. Are these typically good quality brands? Those are the, yeah, I would say those are the better quality brands as opposed to, I mean, I'm not going to name any names, but the ones that you'll see on the tube being advertised or <laughs> your um, supermarket. All right. Thanks for the You're not sponsored, are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, thanks, Kyra, as you can see, good to know. <laughs> so thank you so much indeed. Um, okay, and let's have a look at the um, next question. So when should we the white caught fish always be stopped in pregnancy? Um, I would take them throughout pregnancy and throughout breastfeeding. Uh, the... DHA is really important for baby's neural development, neural pathways, and baby's brain. And generally, baby will get enough, but it will be at the expense of the mother. And you will have a store of omega-3 generally in your brain. And if you are not getting enough from the diet, the baby's going to be um, getting what it needs from you. And, and, and you might then end up with you know dry skin or baby brain or fuzzy fuzzy head or um prenatal or postnatal depression those are some of the risk factors so um i would take it throughout if you can if you're not allergic and if you're not on blood thinner medications in which case you should stop um, and have a discussion with your consultant all right, thank you so much again. Uh, okay, let me just go to the follow-up, okay? So I was told that the fish oil needs to be stopped around 34, 35 weeks as they thin the blood and not to a risk. A miscarriage, right? So that might be advice that's personalized to you. Um, it's, it's not something that I've come across in the literature. Uh, you can, you know, it's not going to be detrimental just if you've been taking it to stop it for a, a period of time. Like it's not, your levels are not going to drop. It takes about three months to build up, build into your cells. And so it's not going to just disappear and cause any kind of awful damage to you or your baby if you take a break um, and restart it again once you're ready, once, you, once you've delivered the baby. Um, but I don't know what, what advice you've been given based on your personal situation. And we have actually a follow-up. The general advice is not monitoring uh, my surrogate. Okay, surrogate mother. Yeah. Then. 
Okay. Thank you, Angela, for uh, the clarification. Yeah. And thanks still, of course, uh, Sandra, for your advice. Uh, we will be slowly finishing, okay? There are a few questions, of course, right here. Uh, but as I mentioned, don't worry, all the questions that we will not answer here tonight, uh, we will forward to Sandra, okay? And let's have a look. What about melatonin taken during natural IVF cycle? Can it be taken? So melatonin in the UK is classified as a drug. It's a hormone as opposed to a, a nutritional supplement. Um, there is some evidence that it can help support uh, egg quality. It can disrupt your cycle. So if you're taking melatonin, it's possible that it can have an effect, a detrimental effect on your cycle. So if you're having natural IVF, you're relying on your own body cycle um in which case i would probably be quite careful about that um but it's melatonin is something that you need to discuss using with your clinician all right definitely important to to know that yeah thank you so much indeed for that question okay and it's always uh, a question that we receive very often that you recommend taking ubiquinol rather than coq10 so CoQ10 comes in different forms. There's ubiquinone and ubiquinol. Um, there's some evidence that ubiquinol is more potent. It has gone through a, a, some conversion. You might need a little bit less of it. Um, again, it's very personalized. If I think that um, a client is it, it, it's, it's kind of a clinical assessment that I would make based on the client in front of me um i would typically typically like i quite like to use ubiquinol um but there's very little research on it on either so it's it, it's more going with your clinical judgment as a as a nutritionist and you looking at your your sort of experience as opposed to looking at the data because we don't have that much actually uh, from the literature Thank you for the clarification to this one. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the um, next question. So how about other antioxidants? I read that NAC and ALA are good to be to take, but uh, I'm concerned about taking too much, like mm -hmm. already taking ubiquinol, vitamin E, vitamin C. So other antioxidants, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of taking like an antioxidant complex on top of your, your your, and when I say an antioxidant complex, it's vitamin C, E, zinc um, together um, in a supplement on top of your multivitamin. Um, NAC, so NAC is N-acetylcysteine. I actually had a slide of this and I took it out because I thought I don't want to go into too much kind of technical stuff. But um, it's an antioxidant that can help support your production of glutathione, which is your body's chief antioxidant and some people are really poor at making glutathione genetically um, it can help prevent damage to the sperm it can help prevent damage to the egg um, it can be quite useful for some people if you think that your lifestyle and your diet um, needs a lot of antioxidant support um, and for me, for example, I've done my, my genetic, I, I have my full genetic profile. I know that I don't produce glutathione, so I take NAC to support my own, and I take glutathione as well. But I do that because I know, personally, for me, I need it. Um, you, you shouldn't take NAC if you are asthmatic, and you, you have to be very careful if you have any kind of allergic um, if you're allergic, um, generally, um, I th that's something really you should be getting personalized advice about. Sorry. Um, All right. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Again, of course, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, it's thank you still for the question definitely interesting yeah. one as well and uh, i will show you the next question probably this will be one of the final questions okay uh, i was advised by an acupuncturist that i have poor nutritional absorption this was from looking at my tongue checking pulse however is there any an actual way to know this for sure blood test mm -hmm. yeah okay 
blood tests to check your um and there are lots of tests available um again a nutritionist can help you <laughs> can help you with this um i i mean i'm not you know i'm a big fan of acupuncture but i don't know it for me it's kind of mysterious how they work so I don't know how that would relate to your blood uh you know to a, a blood test but you know I'm I'm used to reading a blood test result and understanding then what you know what you've got in your cells um so that's what I would recommend all right Thank you so much. And uh, there is a question before, I mean, uh, before uh, this question, you mentioned genetic testing, okay? Are you, do, do, do you do genetic tests at your clinic? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, good. And well, sorry, one more. Where is it possible, uh, where is it, is it possible to test your full genetic profile? Would you recommend this? Um. You, you can so any of our fertility nutritionists at the fertility nutrition center can help uh organize this you don't want to go to kind of high street um you know the sort of kits you can buy online generally they're not particularly good it's better to go for a practitioner uh a product that's generally available for practitioners and uh there's just two labs really that i use in the uk um Yeah, I mean, I, it's incredible in terms of um, understanding your 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 body better and understanding what you can do. It, it's I don't know if you've heard of the term biohacking, but if you sort of want to really optimize your potential, um, then genetic profiling is 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 really interesting because you can see how your body kind of uh, processes hormones and uh, you know antioxidants and inflammation and you know what you should and shouldn't be doing really but um it's not the first test i reach for when i do it when i work with the client it tends to generally be those who just want they just want it all they just want to know it all um but the genetic profile will tell you it's like your it's like the book of your life but then it doesn't tell you it doesn't give us the answers of what actually what your body's doing with that information so it's your body's kind of always reading this book um and it's up to interpretation so if that so you still need a blood test to look at your nutrient levels and see what's actually going on and you're still going to need to find out what's going on with your digestion or inflammation or whatever so it's just looking at your potential so if you're interested in finding out the potential and what way you're sort of push where your weak links might be and where we might want to focus our attention um genetic testing is incredible um i would say if you're somebody who's highly anxious you might want to give a miss because it can you know you can you can get a little bit stressed um if if you find something out that's potentially you know you know if, if you're highly prone to alzheimer's or something for example or highly prone to certain certain issues and um you know you do have to be prepared prepared for that as well so it's yeah it can, it can be tricky very interesting yeah it's a tricky yeah, one it can yeah. definitely in this case definitely can be uh quite tricky and as i mentioned we will be finishing but don't worry all the questions will be forwarded to sandra her team right we'll be happy to, to help them help all of our patients but before that one more question and i think uh, it's something that you can still help with us uh, help us consultations are better online mm -hmm. or in person um i i have been working online for years now and after covid and the pand pandemic every nutritionist is online um i think there are pros and cons with everything as um, a lot of my girls have not really gone back to in clinic consultations um because we're still a bit wary and you know um it's safety and all of that and um you know also if, if you're not in london or somewhere where there's you know a lot of options then you know it's great because you can just work with anybody and um it depends on you really i mean you do have to have that rapport and the trust with your nutritionist as well and if you think that you'd rather work with someone in in an a, a, an office and you know maybe that's the right thing to do for you but 
we don't really necessarily touch you so much or you know do any kind of um, poking and prodding um, if we think in poking and prodding we'll send you to a doctor <laughs> so um, yeah that's great thank you so much and just to clarify you also are available for private appointments online right because someone um, has added that I'm personally not taking clients at the moment okay mm -hmm. um, but I've spent um, an enormous amount of time training a really incredible group of practitioners who are all personally also supported by myself so they have uh complete access to me for anything that they need support with so they are really Perfect. the best um the best option at the moment yeah thank you so much indeed for the clarification so of course remember everyone that if you would like to get some more details you can get in touch with sandra her team and uh, after we finish you will be redirected to uh, Sandra's um, profile on our website there is a contact button you can use that and uh, this will be forwarded to Sandra and her team as I've mentioned and well uh, before we finish one more comment here very interesting thank you Sand Sandra sorry for one more question but is it is a full genetic test not a blood test just to clarify um, it's actually a swab it just takes okay. cells from the inside of your cheek and um it's, it's just, you just get your genetic, um, I mean, I wish I had one I could show you, but it's, 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 it's just basically saying, you know, you're potentially not very good at yeah. absorbing vitamin D, you're not good at storing, you know, this particular hormone, so you probably need more of that or, you know, whatever it is. So um, it's not looking at your specific nutrient levels um, okay. or any, yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Just to clarify, we got this. And one more comment. Thank you. Super interesting presentation. Couldn't agree more, really. Uh, please see additional information for you, boys, too. Thank you so much, Angela. And as you can see, okay, perfect. Thank you from Karen. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you each and everyone for being with us tonight, for your incredible questions. And I do believe it has been useful and it definitely was uh, a brilliant, brilliant session. You can see the comments, <laughs> so I just want you to see them. And uh, I just want to mention, remember, it has been recorded. It will be available on our site. Tomorrow you will be able to uh, see it on our YouTube channel, but also myivfenses.com as well, of course. And uh, Sandra, it's been great to have you here for sure. Thank you so much for your help. And with all the questions, this is definitely a topic that we could discuss more and more. And I think two hours wouldn't be enough. <laughs> So thank you so much indeed for um, for being with us tonight. And is there anything else you would like to add? Uh, me? No. Uh, no, thank you for having me. Um, it's been interesting as always. And uh, yeah, I hope it was helpful. I'm always so worried about talking about supplementation in the sort of public. It's forum. a tough one, right? It's a tricky, tough, tough one. That's for sure. Yeah. It's true. But I'm glad that we are able to still talk about those things because as, we, as you can see, it's something that... Uh, that is never, um, you know, it, it always brings lots and lots of questions. It's it's always interesting, yeah. and well, thank you so much indeed. <laughs> and you. well, thank you. Have a lovely evening or day wherever you are. And I'm always happy that we are here bringing all of those topics to you. And I do believe it's been it's been very useful for you. And all, all, all I can say that I know Sandra will be back uh, soon. I hope Sandra. Uh, it's always lovely to have you. So thanks a lot. Take care and bye.